Starting off the second episode of CGR Thrifts is the outdoor flea market. I recently found out that you were allowed to enter through the back where the line is much shorter, allowing me the chance to snag up some video games before anyone else can. If you've seen the first episode or ever gone thrifting yourself, then you'll know that sadly this is always a possibility. And what would you know, my thrifting buddy Cam also had the same idea. We thought it best for us to split up early on and do quick sweeps of some rows, calling each other if we saw anything of major interest. And almost immediately, Cam came up with something about the same time as I did. Hello? Hey Chris. Yeah? Uh, you might want to run to the back row. Alright. Fast forward me running around like an idiot. <laughs> And it turned out to be a pretty nice find. An N64 with some accessories and whatnot, but the main drawer were the five games complete and in box. I was only really interested in Quake and Glover, but since he was only selling the whole bulk for $60, I quickly ran away back to my cheaper find as fast as I ran there. Returning back to my find, I got a chance to see all the games there, and among them I decided to pick the weirdest ones available, and so, for 5 bucks, I was able to walk away with Bugs Bunny Crazy Castle, TNC Surf Designs, and Anticipation, all for the Nintendo. Now, believe it or not, with all the games and systems I collect, I actually don't have an Atari stick controller, which is why I was really interested in this one here, but, like the N64, it was a bulk deal. And although it was a cheap bulk, I have no need for a second Atari 2600, so I decided to pass up on it. Came across a copy of Splinter Cell Double Agent for the Xbox, and so for $2 I picked it up, since I have been meaning to play through this series eventually, and from what I've heard, this one is pretty good. Met back up with Cam again, who took interest in a new electric razor, while I took interest to a pair of plastic binoculars. Cam's interest in shaving far outweighed my interest, as he actually ended up buying something from these guys, while I contemplated the need for plastic binoculars. Found a copy of the Super Mario Bros. Super Show for a hundred coins, aka a dollar, and you can't skip out on quality TV like that for that low of a price. Speaking of Mario, as I was about to shut my camera off, I noticed a Mario Game Boy game on the ground, and as you can hear from my reaction, I was pretty excited. Oh. Wait, what? Is that just on the floor? Yeah. Oh shit. Whose is it? I. It might be. I don't think it. I mean, if you don't have it, I'll take it. Yeah, take it. Since nothing from the nearby vendors suggested that he was selling it, we assumed that someone had dropped it, and it was my lucky find. As it turned out, though, Cam doesn't actually own the game, and since I do, I decided to give it to him. Down the line, we came across a box of PC games for $20. Out of all the games included, though, the one that interested me the most was this Star Wars game called Star Wars The Gungan Frontier. When I asked if there was any chance of them selling the games individually, the vendors got completely distracted and never even answered me. Instead, they started speaking a different language, and because I was unsure if they were making fun of me or not, I decided to awkwardly leave. Walking along, we found a table filled with games, and since I love steel bookcases, I was immediately drawn to this limited edition copy of Doom 3 for the Xbox. The vendor wanted 3 bucks for it, which I thought was a pretty nice deal, so I picked that up. Found a wasp on a table, and by thrift and logic, that means it was for sale! However, upon purchasing the wasp, it flew off. Okay, I didn't really buy the wasp, but hey, one can dream. Speaking of dreams, I came across this nightmare of a find. What it is and why it exists, I don't know, but I'm getting off topic. On the subject of getting distracted, I returned back to the couple who were too distracted to answer my questions about the PC games. Before I could ask them though about individual selling, they lowered the price down to 5 bucks, and to be honest, I would have ended up paying 5 bucks alone just for the Gungan game, due to it just being something that I've never seen or heard of before. But, as it played out, I'd ended up getting all of them. With 
too much to carry, we decided to end our thrift in here, but not before having some burgers. Every week, these guys are here and they make the whole place smell amazing, so me and Cam finally decided to get something from them. I had the opportunity to speak to one of the guys who cooks up the burgers, and it wasn't long until I noticed that he had a favorite word. They're doing like all the, uh, they're selling all the, like, uh, the stones and shit, and the mystical stuff and all that shit. Yeah. And, and they're gonna have like the leaders there and all kinds of shit that donated for the town for like the animal shelter and all that shit. So I'll be the only thing with food there. Mmm, such colorful language for a food vendor. After that, me and Cam went our separate ways as I decided to hit up the nearby indoor flea market. In terms of video games, there was nothing there that wasn't already there when I visited two weeks ago. Though the guy who was selling the Game Boy games last time did get a nice display case for all of his games, so that at least made searching a bit easier. That also means though that any new games he get will be more visible to other buyers, so it's a bit of a trade-off. And remember that guy from the first episode who wanted 200 bucks for the Atari and all of its games? Well, it would seem that the price went down. A lot. And now it's only a hundred dollars. That's still way more than I would pay, but we're getting there. Out of the indoor flea market and on to Savers, but as I was heading to Savers, I decided to stop by Spirit Halloween, seeing as it was that time of the year. Inside, however, I came across a very interesting costume. Sidekick Bros. Looks familiar. Now I don't know about you, but I have fond memories of playing Sidekick Bros as a kid. Oh wait, no I don't, that was Mario. Enough of that though, because it's time to go to Savers, and wouldn't you know it, there's stuff inside. And people! A quick sweep of the board games turned up no big box PC games that I could see. Though I didn't look too long, because when you're inside wearing sunglasses with a built-in camera around them, standing by the board games and toy section surrounded by random young kids, it tends to get you a few nasty looks. Nothing really of interest in this part of the electronics, just a bunch of keyboards that I don't care about or really want. However, the part of the store that has all the smaller electronics did have a couple of things that I wanted. This really didn't surprise me though, because this is the section of the store where I pretty much always find at least one thing of interest. Found Centipede for the PS1 for 4 bucks, which was a tad bit out of my comfort zone, but I picked it up anyway. I then came across a Power Joy, though not rare by any means, it definitely is interesting, and I couldn't say no for 3 bucks. And so concludes that weekend of thrifting, and overall I would say it was a decent haul, but even a decent haul pales in comparison to the finds that I got the following weekend. And it all started the following Saturday with a call from Cam. You see, Cam decided to check our town's local yard sales when he came across this family. Upon mentioning that he was looking for old games, the family came out with a box of Super Nintendo games, which, lucky for me, he already owned. Since Cam isn't into having doubles of games, he gave me a call and asked the family to put it on hold, telling me just to go there and buy the games. Trust in his judgment, I did just that and came away with a bunch of Super Nintendo games in fantastic condition for only $30. As for what was inside, well, there was 12 games in total, with only 8 being of interest. Those 8 were Super Mario World, Donkey Kong Country, a Super Game Boy, two copies of Mario All-Stars, Killer Instinct, Scooby-Doo Mystery, and Kirby Superstar. The rest were just sport games and a Super Nintendo cleaning cartridge. Back to the yard sale, and I saw that they had the family dog for sale. Doesn't he look so happy about that? Well, in reality, they just wanted the dog on camera, so there you go. Since I was already up and about, I decided to test my luck and visit some other yard sales. While searching at the next house, I came across a DS carrying case. However, the only thing in it was a bucket of lies, as it just contained a leapfrog system with some games and accessories. I'm in college, though, so this stuff is a bit too advanced. I mean, easy for me. Yeah, easy. On to the final yard sale of the day, and there was pretty much nothing. Though I did find this book, dating for under a dollar. Makes me wonder what I could get for two dollars. Speaking of dates, wanna know what would be an amazing date that coincidentally only costs a dollar? 
Why, a trip to the Sunday flea market, of course! First thing I found of interest was a copy of Halo 2, however, as was the case with a lot of stuff the week before, it was a bulk deal with the console itself, so I ended up not getting it. Found a copy of one of my favorite movies, Zombieland, but I decided not to get it because, call me crazy, but I prefer to actually get a copy of the DVD when I buy the movie instead of an empty case. Now, one of the most annoying things about this flea market is the fact that since there are usually four rows you can go down, you often run the risk of missing out on a great find simply because you started off on the wrong row. And when I run into Cam like I did again this week, he usually convinces me to just run all over the place without any order. In the past, this has caused us to miss some great finds, so when we started running in between rows this time, I couldn't help but voice my concern. Actually, we could probably just go because... This just looks, yeah, this is the reset. Uh, I'll kill you though if we miss something there. It turns out that like we missed like the deal of the century. It would seem, however, that in the end, our stupid methods of traveling actually turned out for the better. The reason we miss great deals and finds is because there are other people there who share the same interests as us, like this collector and reseller. Although he's quick to snag up any games he finds, he's also not a complete jerk. We'll share a few jokes and whatnot when one of us scores games before the other does, but as an act of kindness, we always point each other out to vendors that have the kind of stuff that we're looking for, and this week was no different. He pointed us in the direction of a vendor who was selling some video games. Little did I know, however, that this would set off a chain of events that would lead me to the series' greatest find so far. When we got there, though, I was a bit disappointed, as there was nothing that I really wanted, and it was starting to seem like I wasn't going to buy anything that day. So, just to say I bought something, I decided to buy the Super Nintendo game Emmett Smith Football, but, seeing as how it's a sport game, I wasn't going to pay that much for it. I'll give you 50 cents for the Super Nintendo game, keep in mind that it's a sports game and it will probably never find a home. Go for it. Okay. <laughs> I'll do Moving along, I came across something that I thought I'd never see out in the wild, an R4 card. At $10, Cam wasn't really interested in it, but seeing as how it came with the mini SD card and the fact that I'd probably never stumble upon anything like this again, I decided to buy it. With an R4 cart now in my hands, things were starting to look up, but at this point we had already been at the flea market for 45 minutes. This usually means that everyone has either unpacked and no new items are coming out, or anything of interest has already been taken. During the final loop around, however, there was a dollar vendor who was selling everything for, you guessed it, a dollar! This included a pack of double A's, but the real prize was the Shrek toy inside. After I bought that, I started to leave, but as I was walking away, the vendor noticed that I was holding the Super Nintendo Nintendo sports game that I'd previously bought. What? Oh, yeah, dollar? The game turned out to be The Adventures of Bayou Billy for the Nintendo, which I've never heard of before, but seeing as how it was made by Konami, I decided to pick it up. As I went to the other side to pay for it, however, I was expecting to maybe find a few more Nintendo games, but what I found next completely blew my mind. I started finding all these old video games in fantastic condition, with all of them at least partly sealed. The first game I pulled out was Summer Games for the Atari 2600, and I'm a fan of California games, so hell yeah I'm gonna buy this one. Next I found Dexter for the Tandy Color Computer 3, and I have never heard of this game before, but it has the name Sierra on it, so that's usually a good sign. Plus, the box looked cool, so its fate was already sealed when I picked it up. At this point in time, I'd never seen a Commodore 64 game case before, so I thought my next find was just a mini vinyl soundtrack or something. But nope, three sealed copies of Skate or Die for the C64. I grabbed each of these as a bundle for one dollar. And the last thing I found from this guy was a game called Star Empire for the Commodore 64. Never heard of it, but, like everything else, when a game is this cheap and in this good of condition, you can't say no. After all those finds, I thought that this day couldn't get any better, until of course I found a copy of Super Mario Bros. Th OH MY GOD! Well, while I'm sure this game has seen better days, I decided to buy it for a quarter with the intent on giving the fallen hero a respectful cremation. But, for shits and giggles, I decided to see if it worked, and <laughs> it actually did. So, I'm gonna have to find a willing donor to give this classic a new case so it doesn't look like an absolute train wreck.
And this is the haul for episode 2 of CGR Thrifts, coming in at a total of $68.75. I visited the same outdoor flea market twice, an indoor flea market, one savers, and three yard sales. Overall, I couldn't be much happier with everything I found this time around. And to think, had I not been led to that vendor who sold me that sports game, I wouldn't have gotten any of those awesome sealed games for a dollar each. But, you know the deal, I can't keep all the great stuff, which means some of it has got to go. So if any of the following catches your interest, then click the respective links in the description below. First up is Super Mario All-Stars. I already have a copy, and I believe that everyone else should as well. I got this in the box of 12 Super Nintendo games, which I paid $30 for, so 30 divided by 12 is $2.50. It goes for $19.23 online, but I'm selling it for $18. $15.50 profit. Next up is the other Super Mario All-Stars and Super Mario World, pretty much two of the Super Nintendo's essential games. Got both for $2.50, which means I got this for $5 in total, and that would go for $34.22 online, but I'm selling it for $31, $26 profit. Up next is the Super Game Boy. Nothing's changed since the last video as I still have one of these and therefore don't need another one. Got it in the bundle for $2.50 and they go for $10.17 online, but I'm charging $10.20 because the economy is bad. $7.70 profit. Killer Instinct for the Super Nintendo, already own it and I freaking love it, but I'd feel dirty hogging a bunch of copies. Got it in the bundle for $2.50, goes for $11.50 online, but I'm selling it for $10.50 because the economy just got better. $8 profit. Dexter for the Tandy Color Computer. It kills me to sell this, but in order to thrift more, I gotta sell some. Got this for a dollar, but I couldn't find a price on my usual site as a basis on what to sell this for, so I just went off of eBay listings. It sold for $40 online, and that's what I'm gonna charge. A bit steep, yes, but I also want this to get a loving home. $39 profit. And last but not least, three copies of Skater Die for the Commodore 64 for only a dollar. But you know the saying, one to keep, one to give to Clint from LGR for just being an overall badass, and one to sell. The usual site I go to actually lists this game as being worth less if it's complete, which makes no sense, so I'm not gonna go off of what they're saying. Instead, I'm gonna use eBay sold listings again, which puts this at $30, but I'm gonna sell it for $25. $24 profit. All items sold make for a total of $120.20, which more than covers what it costs to buy all this. But that about wraps it up for the second episode of CGR Thrifts, and if you enjoyed this, then why not subscribe? Also, hitting that like button never hurt anyone.